Rise and shine, Apocalypse Scouts. Welcome to part one on self-defense for the zombie apocalypse. Zombies aren't evil. They're just doing what zombies do. It's not their fault they're zombies. Nevertheless, if a zombie wants to take a bite out of you, there's no way around it. It's time to kick some zombie butt. Hey! Get ready to rumble. I'm Crazy Conspiracy Dude, your pre-apocalyptic source for post-apocalyptic information. Using digital media to prepare for the collapse or ascendance of digital technologies, this is the art of the apocalypse. You're listening to Radio Free Apocalypse. Whether in a zombie apocalypse or just a regular apocalypse, avoiding a fight is the surest way to win. But even though most fights are completely avoidable, most self-defense videos are all about fighting and hardly ever about avoiding those fights in the first place. So today we'll talk about establishing boundaries, and next week we'll talk about defending them. Step one is to be aware of where and when risk is high and don't be there then. This is the number one strategy for apocalypse survival. For many people, the risk may be highest outdoors, very late or very early, in dark, isolated areas, adjacent to busier spots, or near the alleyways and doorways that lead to those areas. For others, the risk might be highest inside their own bunker. Predatory or infected survivors can very quickly become as dangerous as a horde of zombies outside. Remember, anyone can become a zombie. And whether it's a stranger or someone you know very well, there's no point negotiating with something that wants to eat your brain. So always have an exit strategy. And if things don't feel safe, assertively exit the situation. If this means you've got to evacuate your bunker in a hurry, then grab your bug out bag and bug out. That's what it's there for. If you do get stuck in a dangerous situation, use any means available to de-escalate that situation. Make up an excuse, tell a lie, buy someone a drink, change the subject, but whatever you do at the first opportunity, get out of there and don't go back. Nothing in the apocalypse is 100% risk-free. And since you can't completely avoid risk, you'll need to prepare for the possibility of a conflict. One way to manage risk is to wear strategic clothing, like running shoes or a tracksuit, so you can always make a quick getaway. Au revoir, zombie. Luckily, zombies have short attention spans. But the thing about zombie apocalypses is they also have people. And since most bad guys operate by exploiting their victims' desire to be polite, anytime you enter a high risk zone, dial your attitude to stand offish. Think of your voice as your front line of defense. Be assertive or even rude but not so confrontational that you escalate the situation. Verbal confidence alone is enough to establish you as a hard rather than soft target. Remember, you might not be the intended victim. You might be a bystander. If so, an awareness of strategies for de-escalation and escape, along with the fighting techniques we'll cover in parts two and three, will allow you to provide help without turning yourself into a zombie. Shouting from a safe distance that the police are on the way can be one of the most effective ways to intervene, but not so much if it's zombies. For the moment, at least, you can still take advantage of digital technology by using your smartphone, smartwatch, or earphones to discreetly contact emergency services, to share your location with a trusted friend, or to secretly live stream audio and video footage. Almost all smartphones and smartwatches have built-in, easy-to-use SOS and medical alert functions. If you haven't already done this, take a few minutes to research the emergency protocols on your device. In the event 
of a total collapse of the digital infrastructure, or in any event, really, you might also want to carry some retro tech. In risk zones, I often carry an old phone and a dummy wallet with an empty gift card, a fake credit card, and 20 bucks in cash. Avoiding a fight is easily worth 20 bucks. In extreme situations, it can be helpful to have one or two non-lethal deterrents, like a whistle, a tactical pin, or flashlight, or even pepper spray or mace, depending on the laws in your apocalypse. Non-lethal deterrents may not be enough to send the undead back to their graves, but at least they'll help you deal with the bad guys. If you're dealing with an American apocalypse, guns will obviously be a factor. Just keep in mind that carrying a gun will make you a target. And according to decades of research, guns have not proven to be more effective at preventing injury than other protective actions. And your gun is far more likely to kill you or a loved one than it is to protect you. So in parts two and three, I'll suggest some sustainable protective actions for when a zombie or a bad guy tries to intrude on your personal space. A choice between giving up replaceable stock and risking serious injury in a fight is no choice at all. So unless giving up your stuff poses an immediate threat to your survival, let it go. Let it go. You should not, however, consent to physical assault without a fight. And under no circumstances should you allow yourself to be moved to a different location or a vehicle. According to decades of research, your odds of escaping a violent situation are dramatically increased by acting assertively, aggressively, and if necessary, violently in the initial seconds or moments of an assault. Cooperation or negotiation with those who seek to do you physical harm has been found in most cases to increase the likelihood or severity of harm inflicted. So do cooperate and negotiate as far as possible in order to de-escalate a tense situation, but do not negotiate with physical assault. Establish boundaries physically by raising your hands, not in a threatening, but rather in a defensive posture, as well as verbally. Stay back, don't touch me. If those boundaries are not respected, if escape is impossible, and if you are at imminent risk of physical violence, it is time to fight. Next time we'll explore your options for when all of your nicer options have been exhausted. But that's all for today, Apocalypse Scouts. To earn your risk management virtual merit badge, think through your high risk zones and prepare for potential problems. As always, please like and subscribe, and let's repeat the Apocalypse Scouts oath. Hope for the best, prepare, for the apocalypse. Till next time, happy trails. And remember, give a zombie an inch and they'll take the whole damn apocalypse. <laughs>